welcome to Ableton Live 10. In this video, we are going to introduce this series. So this is going to be a complete beginner's course. Um, it's going to take you from A to Z in using Ableton 10. Um, and right off the bat, you can see I've got it open here on the screen. So before we actually look at the software itself, we're going to talk a little bit about um, organization. We're going to talk about a concept known as limiting your options. Um, we're going to talk about uh, how to really uh, get a good grip on the software by making uh, a little daily routine. Uh, we'll talk about setting goals. We'll talk about um, trusting your taste and trusting yourself um, and believing in yourself. Uh, and then we'll look at the preferences inside of Ableton. But um, first things first is we'll talk about organization. So. Uh, being organized is really, really important. So the more organized you are, uh, the quicker you can get to the pure creation. So if you know where all of your instruments and all of your sounds are, you're going to spend less time looking for things. Um, that's pretty obvious and straightforward, but uh, plenty of times I have fumbled around trying to find where particular things are because I haven't kept my... Uh, organization not, uh, I haven't kept my folders nice and organized so what I do is I'm just gonna go to my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would make a folder management system okay so I would go ahead and right click and I'd create a new folder and I call this folder Ableton resources um, and uh, Ableton resources too um, Able Resources too. That works. Um, you can see right here, I've got Ableton Resources. This is the actual folder that I use. Uh, we're going to make a new one here. So inside of this Ableton Resources, we're going to set up some folders for a few particular things. So we're going to go Ableton Save Files. Cool. So whenever I save my projects, I'm going to save it into that folder. And then maybe I'm writing um, some music that could be one specific genre and then I've got another project that's another genre I'd also make like subfolders inside of there to save them in different locations um, next I would go folder samples so whenever I uh, want to download some samples and uh, use them I would chuck them in there uh, and then I'll show you how to set it up so you can navigate to that folder and easily pull your samples into Ableton um, maybe here I'd put exported tracks so once once i'm finished with the song that i'm writing i can then export it out into this folder and all of my exported tracks will be inside of there so this is just a, f a few examples of what you can do obviously in mine i've got quite a few more so i've got uh stems so if some if, if i'm going to remix another artist's tune i put all the stems in here so you can have a look i've got all of the different elements um I've got exported sets, so when I play sets inside of Ableton, um, I record everything and then I can uh, bounce it out, upload it on SoundCloud or wherever I want. I've got devices as well, so when I make particular instruments, I chuck them all in there. So um, that's mine. Uh, so that's the one I've set up. So if we go back into Ableton down here, and I'll make it full screen again, um, I'll show you how we can, uh, so we can go file, save live set. Cool. And then I can navigate to the desktop and I can go Ableton resources and then I can go Ableton save files and I can go my new project. Cool. And maybe something handy for your um, file management system would be going, uh, you could do it like this. So let's say uh, I'm writing a Mind Mirror tune. Okay. So Mind Mirror is my full on Psytrance project. So Mind Mirror and let's call it uh, the tune I'm working on at the moment is Mind is a Labyrinth. Cool. Uh, I didn't spell lamp Labyrinth right. Doesn't matter. Um, next I would put the speed of the track. So uh, it's 144 BPM. Cool. And then I'd put the key. So it's uh, E Phrygian. Uh, and then finally I could go version 0 0.1 or something like this. So I've got all of the information that I need in that um, save file to quickly navigate there. I know the speed of the track. I know the BP, uh, the, I know the, um, 
musical key that it's in and it's nice and straightforward cool so that is um how you would save your projects what you can also do um, this is ableton's browser and inside this browser you can navigate to uh all sorts of sounds and instruments and effects that ableton has loaded into it but then you can also navigate to places that you've got on your computer so i could go add folder i could show my desktop i could go into Ableton resources and then I could say okay I want my sample folder to show up I want my uh, I want my save files to show up so I could go select folder and then that folder gets dropped in there and I can click on it and I can see the contents of what's in there so I don't have anything in there I didn't actually save that project before um, and if I just go ahead and uh, remove that you can see I've already got one set up here so I've got my mind mirror project there um, and obviously uh, I can go ahead and grab hold of it there and drag it so I can see so you can see I've got um, a bunch of different projects here that have generally got the speed and the BPM but so uh, that is uh, some organization stuff and then obviously you can set your fo sample folder up I've got one here I can see my samples I don't use a huge collection of samples because I don't have um, um, a whole lot of disk space at the moment but that is that cool all right so a little bit of organization we're done with that next limiting your options so what do I mean by this there is a huge amount of um, genres to start with there's a huge amount of uh, digital audio workstations that you could use there's a huge amount of EQs there's a huge huge amount of reverb plugins all, all sorts of crazy effects so it's very easy to be overwhelmed by just really so so much uh, possibility out there and if we're constantly uh, sort of I, I feel like with so much choice it's very easy to be kind of frozen and uh, at a standstill and, and not making progress so what I suggest to people is to learn their tools inside and out so with Ableton pick Ableton stick to it learn it inside out uh, for example uh, if you're looking for an EQ to use I use FabFilters EQs um, and I don't use any other EQ I, I only no, I, I really don't use any other EQ if I if I just want to quickly do something and it's not a, like a proper project I'll use Ableton's EQ8 but generally everything is always Pro-Q2 um, so I've limited my options because there's shit loads of EQs out there and um, maybe as you get more advanced you'll start hearing the character of certain uh, EQs and you'll be like all right well I, I want to use that on this particular instrument and you can get more advanced but right at the beginning picking one tool like Pro-Q2 is a great great way to kind of streamline your process limit your options get stuff done faster get to the creation I would also recommend finding a couple of instruments that you really like if you want synthesizers so something like Serum I, I use Serum uh, and I also use Silent, um, and then I use Operator. So I've got three VSTs that I kind of go to and use. I've been using a little bit of Hive recently as well, but um, generally I kind of stick just to Serum, and Serum is my number one go-to. So then a daily routine. So a daily routine, obviously it's all unique to the individual, so it's the amount of time that you have. It's the, um, yeah, wh whether you're getting up in the morning and you're going straight to work or whether you kind of have the, the day to yourself, I would say you need to make a commitment on a daily routine to try and add in at least a s very small amount of time, at least open Ableton and look at it and do something inside it every day. Even if it's only five minutes, setting the intention to practice the skill that you're trying to, um, trying to master doing a little bit every day is going to be a very good mindset and commitment to make uh, so next goals i think that goals are very important uh, it's good to have sort of a vision or, or a direction that you're heading towards so setting goals could be very good so your goals can be as complicated or as simple as uh, as you like for myself i set myself goals based on maybe uh the number of tracks i'd like to produce in a year uh i do i do like yearly goals so i set them at the beginning of the year and then i try and make sure that they're finished by the end of the year um so for me just to give you an example i uh made 
uh, I wanted to create eight tracks uh, this year, uh, and I think I've made five or six. So I'm I'm getting there, um, but I I'm not sure whether I'll be able to meet that commitment. This year has been a bit turbulent with traveling and all sorts of things. Um, I don't like to make excuses for myself, so I'm going to really try and, and, and get that done. Um, I wanted to uh, get 1,500 YouTube subscribers, and I'm at about 1,000, so I'm pushing my way there, um, and these sorts of things. So so go ahead and set yourself some goals that, that mean something to you and you feel you can really commit to. Um, the next point would be trusting your taste and trusting your... Uh, ability to be unique okay so there's there's a lot of talk um, of artists who have copied somebody else's sound or they the all these artists sound the same or whatever else and we definitely live in a genreified world where we're grouping certain styles together so we have some sort of cohesiveness so we don't just have absolutely random stuff coming at us and there's there's a lot of people that are very opinionated with, um, with with genres and and things that are good and things that are bad. Me personally, I I forget all of that. I I just try and focus on doing what speaks to me, doing what I really love to hear, um, and trying to really channel my energy into my music. And I think that, of course, my uh, when I'm writing Psytrance, of course I'm, I'm using a kick and a bass line, but that's what makes it Psytrance. Of course I'm using leads that do these particular things, but I'm writing grooves and I'm I'm having those leads speak to one another in a way that I, I hope is unique to myself. And if I continue to focus on my taste, then I, I, I will never feel as though I have copied somebody or I'll never feel as though... Um, that my artistic integrity is being compromised because I am doing what I love and I'm doing what makes me happy. And then if, if you're going to encounter people that um, are going to put you down for the style of music that you write or anything like this, um, unfortunately, these, these people pr- probably don't create themselves uh, to start with. They don't understand creation. Um, creation, in my opinion, and the opinion of many, is taking two concepts that are probably quite different from one another, and then making them work together. So uh, th- there's plenty of examples on this. You should look at, there's a quite a good documentary on sampling. Um, you probably could just write sampling documentary on YouTube and it'll come up. And it has it, it puts a very, very nice spin on the creative process. You take, uh, for example, back in the day, they used to take vinyl records and they would cut out particular parts of that record and then they'd take another vinyl record and they'd cut out a particular part of that and then they'd put it together. During the classical music times, a large set of rules were made and we also agreed that BPM was something that was important. BPM organises order from chaos. If you didn't have a speed of your music, if you didn't have a time signature, the music would be pure chaos and that's appealing to some people no worries but for a majority of people that are trying to write dance music first of all you need it to be in a solid song structure of 4-4 timing you need it to be relatively predictable because if you're starting to do things that are too unpredictable you're going to lose the dance floor and if you're trying to make people dance it's not going to work so trust your taste and stay unique to yourself um, finally, uh, for kind of motivational or um, just talking points, believe in yourself. Believe that you can do it. Anything that you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. Uh, and humans, in my opinion, are dream manifestors. If you focus on your dream, and if you work towards it every day, like we've discussed, in two or three years' time by na- from now, you're going to be in a place that you never thought you were. Right now, I'm capable of writing music that that it blows my mind that I, I have come this, this far. Um, I've never done anything creative before this. I never had any creative influences in my family. And all I did was just commit myself to it. And I have a very, very deep passion for audio and audio manipulation. So... Um, that has also pushed me through. Like you have to do something that you're passionate about, but 
believe in yourself. You can do it. If I can do it, you can. Um, and then finally, let's look at the preferences. Let's get some audio coming out of Ableton. So in order to open up the preferences, you can go control comma on your keyboard or command comma on your keyboard. So I can do that. Alternatively, if I close that and I show my taskbar at the top, I can go options, preferences, okay? So inside of here, we've got a bunch of things that we can look at. So first things, we can go to the tab, look and feel. So inside of here, just to touch on the important things right at this point in time, your language, that's important. Your zoom display, if you need things to be bigger, or smaller depending on the size of your screen or your eyesight um, you've got themes down here so light mid light dark I prefer the dark or if you like the look of Ableton 9 you can chuck it on that one but dark for me it's easy on my eyes um, brightness you can adjust your brightness here uh, your color intensity and your hue cool if you have a second screen and you would like all of your plugins to show up on there you can enable that um, to be on inside of here um, as well as having multiple plugins open at one time and these sorts of things cool so that's everything there basically audio if you're using Mac you're going to be using under here core audio and then if you have an audio interface you're going to then select the name of your audio interface it should be quite straightforward okay so on a Windows computer you're most likely using ACO and if you've got a sound card under ACO, you would then select the name of your sound card. So I use an audience USB interface, but for the purpose of recording these videos, I have to use this voice meter stuff. Um, but you would just select your audio interface, and then down here, you can click test tone. So um, I'm just going to turn my speakers down so it doesn't blast me. Um, and I can bring that up to zero decibels, and I can go, cool. And that's going to play a little test tone for us. Um, so my audio is coming through there. Um, my in and out sample rate, I would recommend using 440,100. Uh, it's pretty standard. Um, if you're going to get into mastering and whatnot, you can look at extra stuff. But right now, as a newbie, that's fine. Um, your buffer size generally is set by your audio interface. If you're uh, experiencing like dropouts or problems, then go in here and play around with it. You'll have to probably open up your audio interfaces um, like uh, software and then adjust it inside of there. Cool. So that is all that stuff. Um, this is all the MIDI ins and outs. So you can see I've had some controllers um, connected and I, I don't have them connected right now, but you can see what's been done. Usually with MIDI interfaces, Ableton's pretty, um, pretty uh, sorry, not MIDI interfaces, MIDI instruments. Ableton's pretty good at just setting them up and using them. Um, we've got file folders. This isn't too important to us right now, but... Um, it shows us where all of our external plugins would be installed into. We'll talk about its external plugins. Um, library, so this is all of Ableton's inbuilt library. It should just by standard be um, routed correctly. We've got our recording here. So I use WAV and I use 24 bit depth. It's pretty straightforward. This stuff here doesn't matter too much. Um, if you've got create fades on clip edges, I'd get you to turn that off so it's showing as it is here. It can just be very frustrating. Um, and then that's pretty much it. The stuff here is not too much of a worry. And then um, under your licenses and maintenance, it'll tell you your licensing stuff. Uh, that's not too important. Cool. All right. So that's a look at preferences. And that is a rundown on uh, your general attitude and your organization and that sort of stuff. Um, so I hope that's helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider subscribing on YouTube following on Facebook. Alternatively, if you'd like to support me financially, jump over onto Patreon and become a patron, or donate via PayPal. And don't forget, starting a new endeavor such as learning Ableton and electronic music production can be extremely overwhelming, so take things day by day and believe in yourself. Thank you.